Testing 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Hi guys, how's it going? And welcome back to VR Essentials, your go-to place for all your content about the practical uses of virtual reality. Today, extremely exciting video once again, because we're here to talk about the Lynx R1. For those who are not familiar with it, I'm gonna give you a little introduction. And also for those who are familiar with it, I'm gonna talk to you about all the new information that's come out over the last few days, because it's really, Really exciting. So let's just transition over to the other screen. But before we do that, I just want to welcome you, if it's your first time here, to the channel. And also welcome back to our regular viewers and awesome subscribers, because it's thanks to you that I want to continuously upload new videos to this channel. So now let's transition over uh, to the other screen. And guys, do make sure that you hit the subscribe and enable bell button, because plenty more content will be coming um, to the channel very soon. And smash that like button. Now, the Lynx R1 is the world's first all-in-one VR and augmented reality headset. So it provides both of these different things. I'm going to show you the introduction video that they've done. But first, let's go through some of the specs, because even though I support what these guys do, um, there are certain things which are a little bit iffy. Um, so let's just go through the, by the way, the Kickstarter page, which I'll link below, um, you know, the pledge originally was four hundred seventy-five thousand uh, eight hundred dollars in gold, Singapore dollars, uh, for US dollars. I don't know what it is, but they've gone beyond that, almost double. So that's pretty, pretty amazing considering this company has been around for a few years, but yet to release a product which is already one year late, I believe. But we're very hopeful, and we love what these guys are doing. So first of all. This is what you need to know now. I don't know if it's it's going to be uh, upgraded once it's ready to ship because it's 1600 by 1600 per eye resolution. Let's just put this into context. Uh, first of all, the Oculus Quest 2 is 1832 by 1920 per eye. And we know that Facebook will release a new headset in the next few days that they'll be announcing, uh, which most probably will be higher than that. The Oculus Quest 1 was 1440 by 1600. So again, it brings it closer to what this would be when they release their first uh, headset. Uh, then if we go to the HP Reverb G2, is 2160 per eye, which is 4K per eye. Uh, and the Vive Focus is actually a one point, uh, sorry, the Vive Flow is 1.6K per eye, which is the same basically, um, you know, as what the Lynx is going to offer. And, and, you know, so this is already something that to me, excuse me, um, you know, the, the question will be, of course, um, whether Lynx will offer better resolution in the eyes or whether it's going to be a 1600. Because if it's just an LCD panel, which it is, by the way, they're going to be competing against the next Facebook, which is going to be an LCD plus OLED. Um, then they're competing with all the other companies which are providing OLED as well. Um, you know, so LCD, basically the difference between LCD and OLED, OLED provides crisper colors and also darker contrast. So the darks are really dark and the, they're not gray. And the brighter the colors, the brighter they are. So you really have much more immersion, well, more immersion, maybe not much more, but you know, for things that are quite dark, like Sin Sinners, Walking Dead, uh, Half-Life Alex, uh, or specific enterprise application as well, which, um, you know, for example, fire safety, you know, all these kind of things where you don't want to see stuff around you, you really want the blacks to be black, then this could cause a problem. Um, the other thing of this uh, headset will be 500 US dollars, which I do think is very interesting in terms of this price, considering it will offer a brand new type of technology compared to what is around. I was expecting this thing to be more towards the 1000 or 2000s and to gear more towards the enterprise market. But perhaps it's because, you know, it is a startup uh, and also maybe some of the parts or, uh, I mean, maybe the price will justify the specs at the end of the day. Uh, but if the specs were much higher, then perhaps the price would also reflect this. So let's just go back to uh, the specs of the VR headset. It's got a Qualcomm XR2 chipset, which is very similar to the Oculus Quest 2 by Facebook. Uh, and also the Vive Focus, the new Vive Focus. It will have six stuff, which is six degrees of freedom, which enables you to basically move around, bend around, walk around, jump around in VR. It won't just be a viewing experience. It will be a full-fledged living experience with Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5 enabled. So, Wi-Fi 6, of course, we're all anticipating this. Why is Wi-Fi 6 so important and why are we looking forward to this? Well, basically because it will enable us to have no latency or supposedly, allegedly, no latency, especially when you're streaming content from the device wirelessly 
to a PC using Steam VR or potentially uh, you know with Bluetooth 5 if you're going to be streaming for example Bluetooth earbuds from your PC or another device then when you're talking there's no latency whatsoever between the sound and what you see inside of the headset for example if you go into big screen and you watch a movie then you know there's still some latency today with any Bluetooth headbuds that you use or earphones that you use please leave a comment below if you use specific earbuds or headphones that don't provide you latency I'd love to know because the ones I've tested do provide latency um, so all these things you know is, is great to have on board uh, from the get-go in this headset so let's just go back again to the specs um, okay so it'll be PC VR compatible which is fantastic news over Wi-Fi as I mentioned with Steam VR SD card slot okay up to 1 TB fantastic uh, stereo speakers full microphone arrays and a 3.5 mm jack oh thank you for putting an mm jack there that is fantastic news uh, because of course it's very annoying to have a very long cable running all the way to your PC uh, and also not having the options to only put Bluetooth headbuds as I mentioned or earphones which at the moment provide latency so this is great great news so that's the first thing now let's show you the, um, the let, let's just show you the design first um, you know it doesn't look too bad as I mentioned the uh, unique aspect of this VR headset is the fact that uh, let me just make it bigger you know, is the fact that basically uh, it is the world's first all-in-one AR slash VR headset. And, uh, but, you know, let, let's just go to the video presentation and then just watch that pres some of the presentations because it is, it is quite long. I'm Stan Larocchi and I'm the founder of Lynx Mixed Reality. And today we are going to present you our new hardware, Lynx R1. Mixed Reality gives you the ability to do both augmented reality and virtual reality. And also at the same time. And doing AR and VR at the same time is a game changer and it brings new experiences and everything we know of VR and AR to a whole new level. We can't wait to see what people will do with this new hardware. We've been working for the last two years with Qualcomm and the best teams Sorry on the guys, just checking um... VR Ultralip to deliver you this best-in-class mixed reality headset. Doing this Kickstarter campaign is the best. So what do you guys think of the design? Please leave a comment below. I, I think it's very interesting that um, they are, there is an option to actually hide this part here so that basically you don't get any glaring or any sun in your face. So you will have a hider, which I'll show you in just a minute with the new information that we have. But what do you guys think of the design? Do you think, it, I think it's pretty avant-garde. Um, it looks very light, to be honest with you. Um, leave a comment below. The best way for us to prepare the quantities for production and the fastest way to deliver our users. Also, it's a great way for us to stay independent. So I think here what's also very interesting, let me just backtrack for just a second. Let me just try, here we go. You can see that he's wearing a pair of glasses and it goes in front of the glasses. So people who wear specs, I think this is very, very convenient for them. And also the, the spacer that will come in is gonna go, it's gonna go on the outside, not in the inside. So this should also enable you to wear glasses without any issues. Uh, you know, you don't have to wear perhaps additional third party um, you know accessories in order to fit the glasses inside and you can see here the hinge now the hinge this is something that to me scares me a bit because generally these things uh, once you you know open close open close open close a few thousand times it could become quite sensitive so I hope that they you know make sure that this is something that doesn't break especially if you're going to drop them guys it all happens to us to drop off your headsets let's be honest so i just hope that this won't be too sensitive and that they'll be able to make sure that this is protected the lynx headset was designed to use your hands as the primary input but we are also compatible with some vr controllers this allows you to experience the existing steam vr game library with controllers but also experience new game and content with hand tracking which can feel more natural especially in augmented reality. So what's very interesting about this specific uh, AR VR headset or MR headset, not MR, XR headset, I'll call it, uh, X reality, because, you know, it's a mixture of virtual reality and also augmented reality. So it's more of an XR VR headset, XR headset. Um, it's the fact that you are, it's meant to be used with hand tracking. So at the moment, um, there aren't that many headsets which enables you to actually be able to use your hands. Very few headsets can do this. Um, the HoloLens 2, the of course the Facebook Oculus Quest and Oculus Quest 2, um, 
And I think that's, and there's one more, which is the, uh, not Varjo, um, oh man, the, uh, I forgot the name, so sorry, leave a comment below, let me know the list uh, of your headset that will enable you to use your, your hands. But also the Vive Flow is supposed to be hands uh, free enabled as well. In the future, they haven't released it, but it will be put in a future pipeline a software update. So using your hands at the moment is still not there. You still have to specifically do specific things excuse me, we're live, um, for, for the actual apps to work. And also the app developers have to make sure that hand tracking is compatible as well with the uh, technology, the hardware too. So we're not there, but it's great to see that, you know, it's getting more and more adopted because of course, um, if you want to train people, firefighting and all these kind of different things, just pick up the bottle. Or if you're doing the army, pick up the gun. Or if you're you know, uh, training someone to, to, to operate some specific uh, machinery, then uh, use the hands to do it or play the piano, you know, all these kind of things. You don't want to be using controllers for this. You really want to be using, of course, uh, your your hands to do that. So uh, I'm going to show you later how it actually performs uh, with other people's videos. Again, timestamps below if you want to skip anything uh, in this video. So let's just go back. We deliver in our SDK a sample app called Lux, where you will see a small animal running in VR and AR at the same time, and you will be able to experience hand tracking and all the new capabilities of the device. They are limitless applications for the. So this is really the part that is to experience very hand tracking and unique. All the new capabilities of the device. So check this out, guys. Basically, this is what no other XR or VR or AR headsets currently do on the market. If you want to get an Unreal AR glasses, for example, all you have is this. You know, you'll see some AR stuff in front of your glasses. That's it. HoloLens, this is the only thing that you can see is AR stuff in front of you. And that's it. Oculus Quest, um, HP Reverb G2, Valve Index, Vive Flow. The only thing you can do is go inside of there and be immersed within VR. You cannot see your surroundings, although pass through you can with the Facebook Quest, excuse me. Um, but you cannot see your surroundings and go inside of VR like this. Look at this. Look at this. They Whoa, are this is what's super exciting about this VR headset, guys. You gotta be excited about this. Um, this is what's really, really amazing about this VR headset. Limitless applications for the links, but entertainment and communication are definitely the most Look at important this. ones. Look at this. You can play games, watch movies, visit museums, work out, and so on. All that in VR. I'm just gonna skip. Tether to the long, a greater understanding from the environment. We have placed the speakers above the ears for better audio quality without the need for an external device, which would isolate the user from his surroundings. Now, what I also like about this design, which if we compare it to, for example, the HP Reverb G2 or any Facebook uh, headsets, also the Pico for this matter, is the fact that the ears are unblocked. And all the other VR headsets, I don't know if you noticed, but when you try to put, um, especially these kind of headphones, let me just show you very quickly. Let me just transition over again. So if you try to put these kind of headphones like this, these big ones over the years, normally speaking, uh, VR headsets actually block the halo strap. It's called a halo strap. The strap will actually block uh, the ears, which means that the, he the, the, head the, the headphones can't sit on the ear properly. And you know the only option we have is to put earbuds. Now, earbuds are great, but they're very intrusive. They go inside of the ear compared to normal headphones. And you know it can damage the ear more uh, if you use them for longer. So this, I love the fact that the ears here are completely unblocked. I think it's a very convenient headset. The need for an external device, which would isolate the user from his surroundings, control of the direct environment to process added size, and up every single part is optimized for manufacturing AR that is good up. All right, guys, so uh, they work in various different partners. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go to uh, the Road to VR article. And just to show you, so in less than two weeks since launch, the Lynx Kickstarter uh, approached twice the funding goal. Can you believe it that in twice, in two weeks, they approached twice? That's absolutely incredible. So they have different goals. I'll put the link below. You can go and check them out. Uh, but this is not a promo video. It's, I'm not trying to sell them, to be honest with you. Um, 
So uh, again, you know, 1600 by 1600 resolution LCD panel, uh, by the time it's going to come out, it's going to be kind of outdated, you know, it's going to be kind of Quest 1 kind of resolution, which is okay, but you know, come on, it would have been great to have uh, better than that. So personally speaking, I would purchase maybe the second iteration and not the first version. That's just my personal opinion, nothing against Lynx, um, but I'm just saying that I would wait until the next Lynx R2 and not the Lynx R1. One, uh, but if you want to support them and get them to the uh, get them so that they get mainstream and they can possibly compete on the market and all these kind of things, and of course go and buy the R1. Um, so let's just see uh, what. So the other information that we have is two. One of them, who's a supporter of the VR Essentials channel, guys, um, is MRTV and Cass and Cherry. Cass and Cherry uh, and MRTV went to the headquarters of uh, links in Paris. So check this out. The links are one. And now? Now, uh, there's several different things that we're going to talk about as to what I've noticed inside of the uh, VR headset and what we see. Now, this is one of the video clips that uh, MLTV Sebastian Ang recorded that I'm extremely excited about. This is my hand. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take the sun. Check this out. And I'm Okay, let me just double check that I did transition over. Sorry about that, guys. Yes, I did. Okay. I'm going to check this out somewhere else here. And this is the beautiful thing now. This now he's recording through the lens, guys. This is through the lens. The recording is not separate recording uh, onto the PC. He actually put the camera on the lens of the actual uh, Lynx R1. So check this out again. Check this out. I'm going to take the sun and I'm going to Put it somewhere else here and this is the beautiful thing now wow. this is the office and i can put my hand wow. behind the sun and it's completely occluded wow and you cannot do this with an optical system like for example the hololens this <laughs> is really the magic and what are you seeing right this is the magic, guys, is what Sebastian Ang from LRTV is saying, is that there are no other XR headsets at the moment which are enable you to manipulate objects in a 3D space within the 3D environment of the augmented reality space or virtual reality space or XR space, which is a world's first. So, you know, as you can tell, the, 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 the object was placed inside of the sphere, um, the galaxy sphere, which is kind of a VR environment, uh, and then comes out into the augmented reality environment, yet still being able to manipulate the object within the 3d space <laughs> through the lens of the links r1 and there you go he, took the, he, ta he takes the camera out just to show you that his camera was actually filming inside of the links itself now this is the first thing which i think is really really amazing let's go to Cass and cherry's um video and i'm going to show you that there are some things which i've noticed um, on the video, which I'm going to show you. Okay, first of all, let's check out the technology of the lens itself. 1600 pixels per eye at 90 hertz refresh rate. Now, this is unique about the head extensible so, to one terabyte with an SD card. There are dual LCDs in there with 1600 times 1600 pixels per eye at 90 hertz refresh rate. Now, so the first this thing is, is unique about the head that there are two four volts get that the optric free from prism lenses. Uh, it's a new design never seen before in other headsets and it's uh, these lenses that uh, makes it possible to pack all the components in such a small. Have you seen these lenses? I mean, they look amazing compared to anything that's around so far. And you, you, you would think that basically with these kind of lenses uh, that the headset would actually be super huge, right? Because they look so thick. I mean, they're massive, they're thick, but they're very light. And the fact is that the form factor of the entire other headset is also very light and very small. So this is quite interesting. Now let's, let's move on into the video. Form factor. Yes, I got this as a gift. Super awesome. <laughs> but more about what it looks like in the headset in a bit. Uh, continuing the specs, stereo speakers 
on the side a four microphone array. So what I want to talk about Wi-Fi here is and while the chip can handle seven cameras. Okay, so it it can handle seven cameras, but there will be six cameras. And even though it's so, this is great because there's more. It's three more cameras already. Sorry, two more cameras already than any Facebook Oculus Quest headset, and also any HP Reverb G2 or any other headset on the market at this moment in time. So this is really really good. Uh, which better, which basically means it will be able to scan your environment much better and also uh, provide better tracking too. But I want to talk about the IPD and the adjustment of the actual lenses itself because I think this is going to be one of the biggest flaws on the R1. This headset houses six cameras in total. That is more than the Quest. Two RGB cameras for the low latency color AR pass-through, two infrared cameras for the hand tracking using Ultra Leap, and two black and white cameras for positional tracking. It's pretty incredible how much they could fit inside that little front. So the headset is designed to work without controllers and focused on hand tracking. There will be controllers available, but they are not ready yet. All right, so there will be controllers available, but they're not ready yet. It is supposed to be a hands-free uh, headset. Now, what I want to talk to you about, guys, is the actual adjustable uh, lenses. Let me just, uh, here it is. ...separately to match your eyes, which could be... An app where I was Harry Potter throwing around spells. This worked, but this was the first time both Jerry and I noticed we had trouble finding the sweet spot. You cannot just. Okay, so basically, uh, Cass and Cherry are two people on their channel. Do go and check out the. Do go and check out MLTV and, and uh, also Cass and Cherry and leave a comment um, on their channel and to say that you came from VR Essentials to say hi. That would be really cool. Uh, so basically, um, they were both there. They both tried it and they had some issues with the actual adjustment of the sweet spot. And this is what I want to talk to you about. This worked, but this was the first time both Jerry and I noticed we had trouble finding the sweet spot. You can adjust the lenses separately to match your eyes. So you can adjust the lenses separately to adjust both eyes, but you have to do it from the back of the headset. There is no specific uh, button at this moment in time, which allows you to adjust it. And also you can see that it looks I mean, I don't know, it just looks like it's in bits and pieces right there. I hope they're going to put some kind of casing. I can see the wiring here. Um, you know, this is all open. So, you know, what if some liquid, I mean, God forbid any liquid goes there or sweat or steam. Uh, how is it going to be protected? You know, these are the kind of questions that I have. And again, this looks very fragile. These kind of things break extremely easily. You know, these are the kind of questions I have when it comes to startup kind of uh, manufacturing, um, you know, instead of getting it done. Um, I mean, I, I'm sure it's going to get better, guys. Don't get me wrong. I'm sure this is just a prototype, but I'm just saying these are some of the things that I would be asking myself about and making sure that I hope uh, they, you know, uh, fix or, or they look at or they take into great consideration. And also it'd be good if here uh, they could just place a little button so you could actually adjust the lenses. Maybe one here, one here. So at least you can adjust them independently. But at the, at the end of the day, you don't have to remove the headset or anything like that. Which could be great, but also made it harder, especially with the immersive cover on. So you can see the immersive, the immersive cover I was talking to you about earlier here which basically blocks out any light or anything like that. Uh, so you won't have any glaring, excuse me, uh, you won't have any glaring of any kind. I found this took too much time and I just couldn't get it entirely comfortable. So she couldn't get it entirely comfortable. It's probably because it looks extremely fickle. If we look again, it's harder, especially with there's no clicking. Uh, at all, you know, it's very smooth, kind of. But also made it. It looks very smooth. There's no click. There's no, you know, like 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 the ultimate the uh, the HTC Vive Flow at the moment. You can click it in place, uh, or the you know Oculus Quest 2. You can click it in place with the HP Reverb G2. It can sometimes slide a little bit because it is a slider, not a clicking slider. And this looks very like it's got olive oil or something on it. So it looks extremely, you know, very slidey. It's a bit harder, especially with the immersive cover on. I found this took too much time and I just couldn't get it entirely comfortable. So most of my time in the VR demos, I saw something that looks like ghosting. And because of the lens's fourfold design that is corrected by the software, I saw my visuals become a bit wobbly around the areas where it falls. At okay, so she said that basically it looks a bit wobbly around the areas when it falls. So this is very reminiscent, uh, fun enough, of also the, we just spoke about this on the channel uh, a couple of days ago about the uh, Vajo Eros lenses, which are of course are super clear inside, 
but uh, when you're looking around it's wobbly as well it's not actually super clear or in front you can go and check out that video link in the description below as well I'll put a link to that video uh, which we posted so you know Again, you know, these are kind of things that they will have to fix and perhaps it could be a fault of the new design of the lenses uh, because they are very original kind of design, right? Uh, so let's just go back again. Asking Stan, he told me the lens and the display were not precisely calibrated together in some eyepieces yet, but this should be resolved once they hit production using the two lenses. Okay, so it should be resolved uh, when hitting production. Uh, the other thing I wanted to show you, so here are the controllers ready which uses two armband straps with IMUs for the tracking. This is not Okay, so you have to put some straps on for the tracking. By an NVIDIA Cloud XR app that streams SteamVR to my headset. They had the fin shift controllers ready, which uses two armband straps with IMUs for the tracking. This is not the final Lynx controllers though. Lynx is going to design and manufacture new controllers without the armbands, but they will work with fin shift as they will provide the tracking technology. Okay, so you won't need the armbands apparently when they're ready to actually release the final unit in production. Uh, because to be honest with you, I think the armbands are very interesting. If they could actually put some haptics in the armbands, that would be very interesting as an additional accessory that they could sell separately as well to augment their revenue stream. Uh, you know, these are kind of things that I, th I would look at if it was a hardware manufacturer, especially a startup phase looking for more funding from venture capital, uh, venture capitalists, or potentially other uh, VR hardware manufacturers who want to get in and get a piece of the action. Unfortunately, that software wasn't ready yet. Yet, so I could only experience the tracking with the IMUs, which worked. A uh, nice little microphone there, Cass. <laughs> then the software is still in its early stages. All demos were shown to me by launching it via. I learned a lot about the team, and I could see that they are working passionately. So it looks very interesting. Um, you can see there is a casing. Okay, so that's good. But at the end of the day, this is also this is going to be the number one thing for me. Uh, whether this is going to snap off very easily or not. Um, I think that's something they need to look at. They really need to look at that. Sorry, I mention it because it's happened to me so many times in other gear that I have, for example, uh, camera tripods and camera gear that I have, lights. Uh, they all have these kind of things and they snap very fast. Um, okay, so let's just um, go back very quickly to uh, MRTV's channel. And uh, let's just look at some other Whatever stuff. We do, we do it. Okay, so while the ads run, I just want to go back to uh, this article here. So basically, they started initially to, for the enterprise focus, but they are looking at making it consumer ready as well. I do love this design with the transparency here. I think that looks amazing. Guys, do leave a comment below. Let me know, let me know what you think uh, in terms of what you've seen so far. Um, you know, so for the IPD, hopefully it will be, the battery life, by the way, is up to three hours, which I think is okay. It's acceptable. Of course, we don't want to be in, you know, in VR too long. It's not very healthy for our eyes and our back and stuff too. Uh, there's no, there's no specs about the actual weight, uh, it seems, but it looks pretty light. I would say it's going to be around between 350 and maybe 500 grams, including the uh, the headband, the head strap as well, I would say. Um, so yeah, I think guys, the, the, the video is probably, probably running a bit long. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go directly to, um, you know, I want to thank you guys. Guys, without you, this channel would not grow. We're almost at 10,000 subscribers. Make sure you smash the like and the research share on all your social media so we can grow. The more we grow, guys, then links can contact us. They can send us the headsets. I can do giveaways with keys and all this kind of stuff. We need to grow, guys. I need your help to grow so I can give back to you. All right, so let's do some shout outs uh, of people who have left some comments on the channel. Guys, let's go to the previous um, video. Wait, just give me a minute. My glasses, again, just need to put my glasses back on. Uh, let's go to now, the previous video that we released was yesterday and it was all about the HP Reverb G2 upgrades. Guys, you have you have left so many comments. I mean, it's just amazing. I love the love that you guys are pouring into this channel. You guys are just amazing. It's just fantastic. Um, 
So uh, le let me just make sure that I've transitioned over and you can see, yes, you can. Okay, fantastic. Um, so first shout out goes to Steve McLean. I got the Gen 2 cable the other week, sorted my issues with having to turn it off at the power cable. Oh, fantastic, Steve, and welcome back to the comments. Nice to hear from you again. Uh, Max Zin Ziminski, sorry, I hope, or Ziminski, I hope I pronounced your name correctly. I was thinking of getting a G2, so this is perfect. But does that mean if I buy it, from the HP website, they will ship me the upgraded version. Yes, the upgraded version should be provided, although I did hear that um, it could only be for America. So I need to double check this uh, and I'll try to get back to you guys in a couple of weeks time with some information. Uh, Monster Arthur, this is really great. Actually thinking about buying the headset soon. This sounds really amazing. Honestly, it's an amazing headset, the HP Reverb G2. So I, I, suggest, I advise buying it, honestly. Or wait until 2022, up to you guys what you do, but it is king of PCVR at the moment. Uh, actually, the two, uh, Ned Shaman, actually the two most interesting headsets are the Reverb G2 and the Lynx R1. You're very right. And Ned Shaman, I'd like to thank you very much for providing me the inspiration to do this video to do today. It is thanks to you that I'm actually doing this video. So thank you very much for giving me the idea to do this at Midnight Rocker 43. I'll never be convinced that the G2 is any good even after the upgrades. I'm so sorry to hear that Midnight Rocker 43, but thank you so much for your comment. Um, it depends on the computer that you have and also the lighting setup that you have. But honestly, with low lighting or a lot of lighting, now the software upgrades have been so good that the uh, tracking is very good as well. Jason L, no, you can't exchange your V1 for V2. Ah, oh, great shame. Uh, great shame. Well, I still, I, I've still asked uh, HP, of course, because I want to do content and compare uh, whether you know it is any better or not. Brian Levy, a year after the worst release of a product ever, and this is the best that HP has to offer. Well, you know, it takes time to do R and D, guys. I think it's great that they improved the tracking, also the sweet spot. And also the fact that I think the one thing they could imp have improved as well, of course, is the audio, the speakers, because there are some crackling issues with some of the speakers. But I think they may have addressed this as well in the new one. X Holster for the Windows update. Try flash your BIOS on latest version. Thank you very much for the uh, for the suggestion because I can't upgrade to version 11 for some reason. Brad, hi Brad, how's it going? Almost two years later, and I think my headset speaker is just barely now. In proving defective. Uh, Brad, it only came out for a year, so you mean one year, right? <laughs> uh, last Miranda, uh, Densi Wilja, how are you doing? And what about the idiots who trusted HP to do it right from the beginning? Can I trade my barely used G2 V1? Apparently you can't, but I will double check. Uh, Fred Smith, I hope Microsoft removes the whole Windows plus Y feature. It's a pain in the arse uh, and adds no value. Thank you very much for your comment, Fred Smith. Uh, Kibura, hi, nice to see you. Thanks for your video as well. Thank you very much, of course, for um, you know for your comment. I will finish hearting everybody after this video. Uh, let me just do it extremely quickly. I do read absolutely everybody's comments, guys, uh, but I don't always agree with what everyone says. Um, but I do generally heart everybody's comments if I do agree uh, with what you're doing. Okay, and let's just. Um, you know, let's welcome some new guys to the channel as well, because guys, you're fantastic. Uh, let's go to the recent subscribers, see you all, and then date subscribe. I'd like to welcome Epont, PP, Sparky's fan, Carnie Zizzle, or Carnizel, Ad Bees, Jorgen Pedersen, Arjun Singh, uh, Epituma FC, Alex Thyberg, Samantha Stepro. I'd also like to welcome Jizz Gaming, Liv Brown, Manta218, Von God, Alicia Mendigadzi, M. Leo, Astrid Herrera, Chris Nandy Hess, Yan Laz. Oh, yes, yes, Lan, I remember you from last time. And Mass Tier. Guys, thank you so much. And, and also, I'd like to welcome everybody else, of course, who I haven't mentioned today, uh, you know, in the comments and also the YouTube uh, welcome. Guys, I love you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for your support. We're almost at 10,000 subscribers. As I mentioned, smash the like, smash the unlabeled bell so YouTube tells you in your algorithm when we uploaded a new video because plenty of content coming, including the new Pico Neo 3, guys. Um, guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. I'll see you. I'll talk to you in the comments below and I'll see you in another video very soon. Ciao. Bye, guys.